Guys, have you been reading the recent One Piece chapters because oh my goodness, Oda has been putting out straight peak. This man decided to just drop a dozen, 10 out of 10 chapters, only to announce he's going on a 5 week long break? All One Piece fans are crying right now. I mean I know he has to have eye surgery, but Goku beat cancer, so is it really that necessary for the GOAT mangaka? Either way, let's hope he doesn't come back looking like Davy Jones. Alright, jokes aside, One Piece has been absolutely fire recently, and it really feels that what Oda said about us entering the final saga is true. And I think we need to discuss the fact that we are at a huge turning point in the story, especially considering the reveals in these last couple chapters, which have been insane. In this video, I want to break down the craziness that has been happening since we left Wano and theorize where I think the story could go from here. Spoilers ahead, so if you are not caught up to the most recent chapter of the manga, pause this video. What are you doing? Go do some reading and get back here when you're ready to talk. Post Wano has been absolutely insane. First off, we've got the Straw Hats landing on Egghead, where we finally get to meet the infamous Dr. Vegapunk. And my goodness, did Oda cook up something good with the info we've gotten about him thus far. Bro really made Albert Einstein if he got a BBL, only to then get a haircut with a barber who went a bit too deep. The reveal of his devil fruit being the brain brain fruit is perfect, as it explains so much about how he was able to acquire such an incredible amount of knowledge and technical understanding without him having to be from the Void Century, enabling him to be an incredibly smart man without any answers regarding who came before, leaving us One Piece fans to get blue balled another day. However, we do get some interesting information regarding Kuma when Bonnie takes a look at his memories inside the Vegapunk lab. Now this was already a lot being thrown at us, but it gets even more crazy when Luchi and CP0, as well as a bunch of the Seraphim, start pulling up in the island to apprehend Vegapunk for learning too much. Now at least for me, this was already a lot and I was eaten good. But Oda said no, that ain't nothing, time to go Super Saiyan, and proceeded to pump out a whole all-you-can-eat three-course meal of chapters containing some of the most insane character confrontations and reveals in the story so far. First off, we've got Law vs Blackbeard and Kid vs Shanks, which were absolutely insane. Blackbeard's crew is expanding greatly and he's collecting devil fruits like they're infinity stones. I certainly don't think the Law's crew is actually destroyed, but Blackbeard certainly sent them packing. And Shanks, holy cow, what he did to Kid can't even be called a massacre. Bro looked at him and it was over, an absolute annihilation. Goku gonna be shaken in his boots after that one. Yet that wasn't even enough for Oda. Bro had Gart pull up on Blackbeard and finally show why he was the man responsible for the destruction of the Rock's pirates as he absolutely tears up the island with his conqueror's hockey. Also in that little span of chapters, we get some really interesting info regarding why Aokiji joined Blackbeard. However, I still don't have any doubt he's some sort of double agent. See, up to this point was insanity. The community was going crazy at all these hype chapters in a row but as usual, you would think Oda would stop. But bro said, no, I'm not done yet. Hold up, let me cook. Kuma is climbing the red line to marry Joie. Vivi and Wapple are under the care of Big News Morgans. Buggy and the Cross Guild are going after the One Piece. And Sabo is alive after getting a nuke dropped on him. Which to be fair, I don't think anyone for a second thought Oda would have actually killed off Sabo as putting a donut through another one of Luffy's brothers Bro would have deserved jail time for that. Oda's hammering out event after event after event, but there's still more, as Sabo gets to telling Dragon and Ivankov about the truth of what really happened at the Reverie regarding the death of King Cobra. And this is the section that I think will truly alter the course of One Piece as a story, as the events that occur during the flashback are world shaking. There's so much going on here, but I'll do my best to highlight all the big things that happen. First, Cobra has an audience with the Gorosei to question them on the lack of records regarding Queen Lily of Alabasta. He goes over the known history of how the world government was formed, but questions why he can't find any information about the fate of the Alabastan Queen after she left Marie Joie to travel home. He also mentions a letter passed down from Lily and asks about the significance of the letter D. And that's when stuff goes down. Emu pulls up and takes a seat on the empty throne and starts madly questioning Cobra about this letter as well as going over how Lily is seemingly responsible for all the world government's problems. They discuss how the D is the name of those who oppose them, 
and that it has been passed down with the new owners being just husks, ignorant of the meaning behind it. They mention how Lily made a mistake 800 years ago that caused the Poneglyph to be scattered across the world, which they believe now may have been a purposeful act. Then things get even crazier when Cobra reveals that the letter was signed by Nefertari D. Lily, and all hell breaks loose. Emu pulls off with Cobra what they couldn't with Sabo and puts a donut through him with some arrow-like devil fruit power. Only for Sabo, who was hiding in the room listening in, to go directly for Emu before being stopped by the Gorosei who appear to have taken on Zoan forms. He then attempts to save Cobra, but the old king knows he will weigh him down as he is dying, and tells him to leave him and run and tell Luffy and Vivi that Alabasta also bears the D. Now if that wasn't crazy enough, Waffle was also peeping in through a hole in the wall and saw what transpired. So in a fit of terror, eats through all the walls and escapes along with Vivi, who he runs into accidentally. Oh my goodness, Oda did not have to go this hard, but he did. Yet he still was not done, as the most recent chapter was even crazier. We got the true names and positions of all the Gorosei, the possible identity of Emu being one of the first 20, who lives on as an immortal due to the power of the Opi Obe no Mi, and that the power that Newt Lelucia was one of the ancient weapons, which they may have had Vegapunk work on unbeknownst to himself. Also, we've got Emu sending the Gorosei after Vivi, as well as telling them to put Vegapunk's Mother Flame invention to the test. And finally, the one celestial dragon who helped Shirahoshi during the reverie being sentenced to death by the commander of the God Knights, who is revealed to be the King of God Valley, and many are theorizing to be related to Shanks. Not only that, but he is also rocking a massive sword, making him next up as a possible final combatant for Zoro. My goodness, can we all please give a round of applause to Gota, the true king of shonen? One Piece fans, let this man take all the time he needs, we are eating good right now. So now the question is, what next? What is next for One Piece? Well, it really seems like there is going to be a true world war coming in the future as the final arc of the series as the secret the world government has been hiding for 800 years is finally out, and both the revolutionaries as well as Wapple, currently with Big News Morgans, knows about it. And I just don't see Wapple hiding that forever, so it's gonna get out to the public. We also see that many countries are rebelling, as the unrest continues to grow across the world, as people's faith in the world government continues to wear thin. Also, with Aokiji leaving, and Fujitora apparently helping the revolutionaries, it is very evident that there is a lot of unrest within the marines as well. Yet despite all this, this story is still following Luffy and the Straw Hat's journey as they search for the One Piece, and with them being only a few islands away, I still believe that the war on the horizon is coming after or as that is being resolved. However, you never know, as with Luffy agreeing to help Vegapunk evade the world government, the crew may be chased to the ends of the earth, and I'm interested what technical assets Vegapunk could bring to the Straw Hats and the Thousand Sunny. With Shanks, Buggy, Blackbeard, Kid, Law, and so many other pirates in a race for the One Piece, this final saga is shaping up to be the craziest yet. Speaking of Shanks, his relationship with the God Knight's commander may reveal a lot about how he was able to walk in and command the Gorosei, and give some insight into his true goals with Luffy. Was Luffy eating the fruit actually a mistake? Does he hold some power over the world government? And is he going to be the final antagonist to Luffy? At this point, Shanks may end up turning out to be an even more masterful manipulator than Aizen. I am also super interested in the true meaning of the Will of D. How does it manage to evade Imu? How is that connected to the Devil Fruit seemingly having a will of their own? Why is Sabo surrounded by those who bear it? To me, a world war just seems inevitable, as Oda has been sowing the seeds of rebellion and revolution throughout these chapters and with Luffy finally taking on the true form of Joy Boy at the end of Wano when he awakened Gear 5, the drums of liberation are pounding. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video, subscribe, and comment down below what you think is going to happen next in the world of One Piece. And let me know what you think of a huge world war happening at the end of the series. Also, let me know what your favorite reveal so far has been. I also want to give a huge shout out and thanks to you guys as we finally hit 1000 subs and 100k views on the channel. Both me and Haben really appreciate the insane support and will continue to put out the best content we can. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.